G'day everyone, it's Sailor MB here. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my no CP Magicka Sorcerer build for Merkmire, the oncoming storm. And yes, that is a Doctor Who reference. It's impossible all the doom and gloom surrounding Magshawk changes in Merkmire went unnoticed by you, but I'm here to let you know Magshawk is far from dead. A lot of the proposed changes didn't go through to live, but ultimately the ones that did have made Sork so much more fun and versatile to play. Over the course of this video, I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys how this build addresses some of the nuances of playing Magic Sork, specifically lack of bar space and lack of consistent pressure options. I'm also going to be doing this video in reverse order than I usually do, because this build has so many interconnected and interdependent parts, more so than any other build I've put together, it's impossible to take it piece at a time. So I'm going to be giving you everything up front, and then we'll go into details afterwards. So, our sets. 5 piece, Bright Throat's Boast. No surprise there. New set introduced with Merkmire that offers the second highest Magicka of any set in game and supplies Magicka regen, which is particularly important on the Magsork with our stupid expensive skills. 5 piece, Necropotence. The highest max Magicka from any set in game. Finally, 2 times Mighty Chudon. That's right. Friggin Mighty Chudon. I never thought I would make a build with this set, but I've run and calculated all the alternatives, and with the several buffs it's received since introduction, it fits perfectly with a Max Magic and Magic Sork for no CP. This set combination, along with a full complement of Tristat Enchants on our armor pieces, gives us the perfect balance between Max Magicka and Max HP. We're sitting at 41.3k Magicka and 23.9k HP. With these stats, we get a huge 11.6k Hardened Ward, remembering this is no CP. With our stats so perfectly balanced that the ward is 48.5% of our max HP, so we've only got an excessive 700 hit points in this build. But Taylor MB, you scream defiantly at your computer screen. You said we were going to save bar space, but you're wearing Necro and double slot in Twilight. Are you crazy? Well, I'm talking to myself, so I probably am, but not on this. For a light armor, Magicka Sork DPS to survive long enough to 1vx, especially in no CP, you need to invest heavily into shields. If you were to follow the example of 95% of the no CP Mad Sorks, then you'd bolster your defenses by shield stacking, but this, my friend, is a terrible idea. Firstly, in no CP you simply don't have easily obtainable resources required to shield stack, which means in order to sustain you have to wear a regen set, in turn decreasing your max magicka and making your stack shields even less effective while also significantly reducing your offensive stats and damage. Secondly, you are wasting too much time and allowing your opponent too much time to recover if you need to recast two shields to prevent a counter attack or gank. So although we're not saving bar space by running Max Magicka sets with a Twilight, because we're simply trading the slots that would otherwise have a Normant and Healing Ward in it for 2 times Twilight slots, the end result we get is much better. So we're getting a huge 4.9k Twilight heal, we're getting more damage through higher Max Magicka, and we have a single 11.6k Hardened Ward to minimise time spent not doing damage. So how does Mighty Chudon fit into this build? Well, obviously, head and shoulders. You should have figured that out by now. But apart from that, let's have a look at our back bar setup to see where, if we drop Chudon, we could slot Boundless Storm. And if we did make that change, how we could recover the stats that Chudon has given us. So, slot 1 on our defensive bar is Hardened Ward, where we get most of our dis defensive strength from. So this one obviously has to stay, there's no getting rid of this one. Streak is up next, and it's also a must have. Firstly, it gives you the maneuverability you need in 1vx situations to constantly stay in control of a fight and keep yourself in an advantageous terrain or environment situation. You don't have a snare or root removal option on this build, so Streak is your tool to deal with those. Secondly, the AoE stun has a multiple of uses. You can use it as a hard CC against the DK who will otherwise have Reflect Up, 
You can use it while kiting to stun all your opponents and buy time slash space. Or you can use it pre-Meteor to get a stun on a decent amount of people before the Meteor hits and get that guaranteed impact. Thirdly, what Shriek is most commonly used for, an escape option. Even if not intending to get disengaged completely, it is also incredibly useful to string out opponents so you can take them on in smaller groups. Bolt of Lightning is also a valid morph option here. It doesn't have the same offensive capabilities, but for straight up disengaging or versing spell projectile based opponents, it is the better option. So Streak is here to stay. Third skill along is Bound Aegis. This supplies us with 8% max magicka, which on this build is approximately 2.7k and minor resistant buffs to make us that a little bit more tanky on our defensive bar. At first, this may seem like the perfect skill to d-slot for Boundless, and I thought the same thing, and you'll see at least one of the clips in the background where I am running Boundless instead of Chudon, but this just doesn't work. If we d-slot Bound Aegis for Boundless Storm and drop Mighty Chudon, we'd lose 2.7k Magicka, 1k HP, and approximately 4.2k resistances. This leaves us with a head and shoulders to fill. However, no other monster set com combination even comes close to recovering those statistics. So dropping Bound Aegis for Boundless Storm is not an option. However, there is another viable skill choice for this slot, either Morph of Mage Light. They give almost the same max magicka, depending which morph, but will allow you for a non-pot or non-streak anti-nightblade option. Fourth skill is Power Surge, giving us major sorcery as well as our offensive healing. This skill slot is probably the most flexible of the build, and you've got two viable alternatives this stage. First option, slot with Boundless Storm instead of Power Surge, drop Chewed On for one piece, I'm definitely going to pronounce this wrong, Dumahias or whatever, and one piece that gives max HP like Scoria and swap to the standard PvE spell power pots instead of immovable pots. This option gives you, before multipliers, 1k more max magicka, 1k more max stam, 350 extra shield size, not much but worth mentioning, a larger twilight heal, but the trade-off is you lose about 2.9k resistances, you lose immovable pots, and you lose your offensive heal. So even though I'd class this as a viable alternative, and you can see a background clip where I'm running this, it is not the recommended setup due to the loss of immovable pots and the loss of offensive healing. Alternate 2 is to keep chewed on, but slot crystal frags instead of power sludge in this slot, and yes, whilst keeping it slotted on your front bar. This allows you to keep popping out hard hitting damage even when you're on the defensive, greatly assisting in turning around a shield and heal spamming defensive fight into an offensive fight. However, similar to the previous alternative, you lose the utility of immovable pots and offensive healing, so although viable, it's not the recommended option. Fifth skill along is Twilight Matriarch. This skill has given us our ridiculous sized healing. It also has great group utility, giving a full sized heal to two players, making it outperform even Breath of Life. It is, however, crazy expensive, and as a DPS, you simply don't have the magic regen to keep groups of people alive with this skill. Very effective for yourself in combination with Ward and the Line of Sight, but not suitable for groups on this build. It should go without saying that we cannot drop Twilight for Boundless. It would mean we have to slot Healing Ward and Annulment in its place, change Necro to a regen set, and generally turn this build terrible. Just to cover all bases, we could also get our major resistance buffs from a potion and open up our monster set. However, it is not possible to craft increased armor and restore magicka in the same potion, and we absolutely need major intellect increasing our magic regen by 20% that you get from the restore magicka potion. So, there is absolutely no skill slots for Boundless Storm making the combination of max magicka sets and Chudon the best option to stack appropriate levels of HP and resistances to get our very impressive no CP hardened ward of 11.6k. To wrap up the Bakhtar discussion, we are using Light's Champion as our defensive ultimate. And I use defensive loosely. Obviously it is a great obolix moment heal, 
but it can also be used very effectively in 1vx to give you a brief window of invulnerability and increased critical damage to nuke an opponent. You'll see this demonstrated several times in the background. Opponents see you struggling, they don't heal themselves to full because they outnumber you, so how could they possibly lose? But you pop a lights champion, get an impressive heal and a damage reduction, turn around and nuke them before they can even comprehend what has happened. So lights champion is amazing both offensive and defensively. Moving on to our front bar. This setup really won't surprise too many people. Magisalk does have the most predictable offensive rotation. However, as I promised you at the start, I'm going to show you how this build maintains pressure between our predictable burst rotations. Firstly, damage over time from Flame Reach instead of Rune Cage. Not revolutionary, but needs an Otin. Secondly, Dot from Twilight. Given our very high max magicka, this hits for a respectable amount and cannot be discounted. Finally, and most importantly, we are running a charged staff with a disease enchant to consistently proc major defile, reducing the target's healing done by 30%. Uptimes vary in PvP, but with a consistent offensive rotation, you'll hit 84% major defile uptime. If you can't kill someone in run one rotation, then your dots and defile will keep them from max HP, allowing you to kill them the second or maybe third time through. Charge is a pretty niche trait, but it's amazing for PvP when you need to get a status effect from a damage type that your class doesn't usually have access to, which is exactly what we're doing here. Giving major defile to a magstalk is huge. The charge staff will also help proc burn in from flame reach and give a very, quite a high uptime on minor vulnerability from endless fury and twilight. So having a quick look at our skills. First up, we have Haunting Curse. This is a delayed burst dot. So we time all our other attacks to coincide with this for maximum damage in the shortest period of time. You will not take the Daedric Prey more for this skill. Just to be absolutely clear, this is not a pet sort build. And if you try to kite or hide behind your Twilight, you are not playing this build even close to the potential, and you deserve every death you get. Moving on. Endless Fury is our second skill along, and it's also a delayed dot, but has a small initial tick, with the delayed portion being triggered when your opponent is under 20% HP. Obviously super effective when compared with the delayed burst of Haunting Curse. Flame Reach is your standard range CC, with a small damage over time to help keep damage tick in between bursts. Fourth skill along is Crystal Fragments. This provides you your largest single skill burst and should only be used when it procs to avoid the chunky cast time. You have two options when the frag procs. Use it straight away and hope for another proc, or only use it when it's properly lined up with your CC and Haunting Cursed burst. I honestly couldn't tell you which option is better here, but I do lean towards the higher DPS option of firing as soon as it procs. This means there are no wasted magic magic gear abilities that could have procced a second one, but it will sometimes misalign your burst, making it easier for the opponent to heal through. And Twilight is in the same place as it is on the back box, it obviously has to be doubled. Generally you want to be bar swap to heal as your max magic is slightly higher on your back bar, but it can be used effectively on front bar also. Finally, our offensive ultimate, Shooting Star. Would definitely recommend sticking to this morph. Even though Ice Comet does more damage, you are missing out on the easy ultimate gain, and given the number of vampires in Cyrodiil, Shooting Star, which is fire damage, would likely end up doing more damage in total anyway. Dawnbreaker of Smiting is also a decent ultimate here if you find yourself frequently in melee range. So, now that we've got most of the critical information out of the way, how do we bring all this information together and kill people? Well, our typical rotation is pre-buffing ourselves on the back bar with Power Surge, Hardened Ward followed by a Light Attack, and it's very important to Light Attack after the Hardened Ward, because this will maximise the offensive coverage of your Berserker Chan, which you have on your back bar. And definitely don't look at my videos for an example about how to do this properly, because I mess it up all the time. 
so ideally hardened ward then light attack um, but you won't always see in that very well demonstrated so power surge hardened ward light attack bar swap from here on you continue light attacking as normal haunting curse endless fury flame reach crystal frags if you want to ult in then slot that in before flame reach so it gets the stun off to guarantee the full impact from Meteor. And if you're ult in a group, then instead of flame reach, put a bar swap and put a streak in there as well to stun the whole group pre-Meteor so they don't all block it. Now just to cover a few of the minor aspects of this build. We are running tri stat enchants on everything. It's the most efficient way to build up all our max resources. And with the change to how shields work, it's very important we get our health up, as well as our magicka. And obviously we're never gonna say no to more stamina on a magicka character. We are drinking Witch Mother's Potent Brew to proc Bright Throat's Boast. We're wearing seven impen to maximize mitigation. You can also run infused on large pieces for more max resources and or mix some well fitted in there as well to stretch your stam a little further. Our typical pots are immovable, restore magicka and spell crit, but we also have detection pots for MBs and I have a few vanish pots there as well just for messing around with zergs. We run in two times spell damage and one times magicka regen on jury. You can probably see that from some of my clips, the build would benefit from another regen enchant, but I'm stubborn about losing damage. So if you're just starting out on magic silks, I'd definitely recommend upping the regen a little bit and having another enchant. Speaking of regen, we're running Atro Mundus. Still speaking of regen, we're not running Vampire on this build. You could run it to get you that boost for regen and stamina, but I would not recommend it. Because our highest hit in damage ability and one of our CCs can both be reflected by DKs, fights with them are generally the hardest and you have to take it slow to slowly wear your opponent down and time your streak CCs with being able to get your crystal frags in there to do damage to them. So our fights with magic DKs take the longest so we really don't want to disadvantage ourselves again by also taking more damage from them. So I would recommend no Vampire for this build, but it would give you more regen. It will just make Magic DKs a little more dangerous than they already are for you. And that pretty much wraps up the build video, boys and girls. I hope I've been able to impart a little no CP Magic Sorcerer knowledge onto you. And if you've made it this far, maybe you've found a build you'll like. Ask any questions on the forums or in the comments of the video, and I'll answer everything I can. Peace out, everyone.